Can we please? Can we please? Can we please talk about one of the most important videos that I've seen in my entire time creating content online? And a video that I think perfectly encapsulates where we are currently in culture. And this video made me cringe so badly, I had to hide under my duvet for basically a day. And because I had to hide under the duvet, you also have to watch this video and hide under a duvet, under your hood, under your jumper, the same way I did also. You're not going to escape it. If I had to cringe, you have to cringe also. And if you're wondering, I can see now what you're talking about. I'm going to show you. This might be the most cringeworthy video you've ever seen. My name's Liam C. And I saw your uh, Camden documentary. I think it's amazing. I'm right now, I'm busking around Camden. And I just wanted to play you 30 seconds of my song. And if you like it, I just want to get your reaction. That's it. Okay. Uh, I tell myself, don't stress, things are gonna get better. Got no peace for the week, whatever. Singing in the street, I'm playing Coachella. Not a champagne life, but I'm happy with the Stella. Stella, yeah. Listen, aye, and she don't do what they tell her. Ice cream weather, but she's all black leather. Spice like pepper, 10 out of 10, uh. Ain't got a fella, but I'll never say, never lie, no. Uh, how many times can I fall for this? So many nights when my phone don't ring, yeah. Aye, now she's acting all extra. Yeah. I love it, mate. It's so good. Can I get a hug? So good, so good. Nice yeah, to yeah, meet yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Nice yeah, to meet you. Legend, you smashed it on yeah, stage. Yeah, thank you so much. Super, super, super. Oh my god. Oh my god. Have you ever seen a more uncomfortable and awkward interaction ever in your life? Look at that stop of me. Look at that pause. I'm randomly scrubbing by the video. Look at where I stopped it. Look at her face. Look at dear Dua Lipa's face in this fucking stop. Look at her face. Look at Dua Lipa's face. Look at how uncomfortably, look at how awkwardly uncomfortable she is in this instance. She literally wants to run. She literally wants to walk into a door and be transported to a whole other place. She does not want to be here with Ukulele Boy. Ukulele Boy completely has ruined the vibe of her having a great time at Glastonbury. She's thinking to herself, what the hell am I doing? How did this end up this way? Look at Dua Lipa's face. Look at her. She's like, oh my God. How awkward. How horrible. How cringe. Number one, you have to be a real psycho to go to Glastonbury with a ukulele and ambush people with your songs. We're at Glastonbury, one of the world famous festivals with some of the best artists, musicians, bands, people that make music in the entire world, all congregating in this one field for this one weekend at one of the best festivals in the world. Everybody is at the peak of their profession, is at the peak of their artistry. Professionals, adored, loved, cherished. Why do we want to hear from you and your little Argos ukulele? Leave that shit at home. By the way, have you heard the sound a ukulele makes? When's the last time you heard somebody play a ukulele and thought, oh my God, that sounds amazing. I can't think of one. I can't think of one person, even that dude that does a thing with the rappers. I think it's fucking shit. It's a good piece of content to put out there and shit, but it sounds fucking terrible. Ukuleles are garbage instruments. Same like a fucking recorder. Same thing as a fucking triangle or a tambourine. We don't want to hear it. We're already watching bands. I want to watch Tudor Cinema Club. I want to watch Block Party. I want to see the Sugar Babes. I want to see Shania Twain. I want to fucking listen to Coldplay a million times over. I don't want to listen to you play your, your fucking ukulele. Absolutely diabolical behavior. But it also reminds me of the countless people we've all seen in our lives. Especially in hostels. There's always a guy like this in a hostel. And in a hostel, it's way more embarrassing and way more rage inducing because the guy in the hostel that always has a guitar or some sort of instrument and he goes to the common area and starts playing it and shit and starts sharing stories about his travels and acting like the fucking big dog that person is usually very old have you noticed that by the way it's somewhat admi ad admirable cute endearing that this young kid i hope he's young by the way but i think he is young he does kind of look young he's got that tiktok haircut right so i think he's a young kid 
it's almost excusable because he's young. He's trying to find his way. He's looking for a moment. He thinks this is going to be it. He's doing what he needs to do to get out, blah, blah, blah. But it's inexcusable for the guy in the hostel to do it because the guy in the hostel should know better. You're fucking 40 plus years old. You're 50 years old. And you're here where, you know, with that fucking Mexican hoodie thing on, beads on, wristbands from all the festivals you've been to over the last decade and shit, wearing horrible boots, fingernails all over the place, scruffy fucking beard, you smell like a six pack and you're playing music for people on your shitty guitar with the same three chords that you've played for the last 10 years. That is inexcusable. This kid I can kind of understand because you're young, you're trying to make your name. But if you're an older dude taking an instrument to a festival, you deserve to die. If you're an older dude going to a festival with an instrument, with the sole purpose of trying to attract younger women, you deserve to be killed. You deserve to die. You actually do. No one deserves to be subjugated to your nonsense, to your noise, to your antics. Leave us alone. We're here to see the experts. We're here to see the pros on the stage. We're not here to listen to you and your fucking, you know, open mic night thing going on. Allow it. But to be a contrarian, to be a contrarian, I wonder if this interaction, however awkward it was, is a reflection of where we are at in terms of artistry. Maybe because the level of artistry nowadays is kind of low. Dua Lipa is one of our premier pop stars in music at the moment. She's okay. She's not, you know, she doesn't blow your socks off, but she's okay. Maybe because Dua Lipa is approachable, and she's within touching distance, people like the ukulele guy don't think she's that far away in terms of talent in artistry. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the pop stars and the artists that we have nowadays are just not good enough, just don't have the level of necessary aura to make most rational people be like, oh, I can't play my music to fucking Madonna. That's fucking Madonna. But because it's Dua Lipa, you feel like, why not? I've heard Levitate. Right? I've heard fucking levitate. My shit slaps too. So maybe it's the fault of these artists and the fact that they're all kind of mid. They're all okay. You know, they play good background music when you're in a lounge bar. They play good music for you to like, you know, go hard on the elliptical. But they're not really changing your world or changing your life fundamentally. Like a Janet Jackson. Like a Kylie Minogue. Like a Madonna. Like a Lady Gaga at her peak. These guys are okay. So maybe that's why people like the ukulele boy are like, you know what? I'm going to sing my song to this guy because really and truly, what's the difference between all of us? Maybe ukulele guy thinks the only difference between him and her is that she has a studio and he doesn't. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> maybe that's what he thinks. He's like, hold on. You have a studio and I have my iPhone. That's the only difference he probably thinks. Deep down, he probably thinks that. That's where we're at in this culture. But I don't know, man. I just look at that video and I'm like, could you imagine... Could you imagine the ego, the fucking gumption, the balls, right? That you must have to go up to a pop star at a festival. Number one, and disturb them. Leave them alone. I'm a big believer in leaving celebrities alone. Although I've had my bad interactions with DJs and stuff, I think bona fide celebrities who rarely go out, leave them alone. Glastonbury, for some reason, I don't know why, but Glastonbury, for some reason, seems to be the one place that celebrities love to go to. Celebrities love to go to Glastonbury. Maybe they all get free tickets. I don't think so, personally, because it's a very in-demand festival. But you see so many celebrities having a good time at fucking Glastonbury. So clearly, Glastonbury is a good place to go to and to hang out because it's so fucking fun. If that's the case and you see them out there, leave them alone. Do them, do them a favour. Give them a break. You know what I mean? They don't, not every day they have to be in celebrity mode and take pictures. Leave them alone. But if you are going to say hi, say hi and make it quick. Stop and chat. No stop and chats. Just a quick drive-by hi. Yo, I love you in so-and-so. Hey, sick seeing you here, man. Enjoy the, enjoy the festival. Boom. A little drive-by acknowledgement. No stopping and give me feedback on my music. Bro, what do you want her to do? She's not an A&R. She's a fucking artist. Leave her alone. But... We shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be surprised because this person called Tom Flannery 
on Twitter shared this post. Had the worst five days at Glasto with him next to our tent. So I know the pain. Allegedly, this kid <laughs> had been tormenting regular schmegular people at this festival also. Not only Dua Lipa, he'd been tormenting other folks too. So this guy shared this video of ukulele guy tormenting him and his friends at his tent at Glastonbury. Epic, epic shit. <laughs> The annoying thing about this, I'm not going to lie, the annoying thing about this, I'm not going to lie, I think I'm the guy that's sitting down here drinking the beer, looking at him. In your group of friends, there's always that one friend in your group who doesn't have a good filter in terms of judging who's annoying and who's a psycho. They just allow randoms to come into your group and they kind of encourage and enable them. I do it because it's good banter and it kind of mixes things up and it adds a bit of psycho energy to the fucking group dynamic and just freshens things up a bit. But to everybody else, it could be annoying because they all could have maybe spotted ukulele guy coming from a mile away. They could have all probably been turning away, looking at their phones, trying not to make eye contact. But all it takes is one guy that's sitting down there, fake tapping his head, acting like he's into it to give the guy confidence to be like oh yeah these guys want to see me these guys want to hear me these guys think i'm amazing enabling him encouraging him just for the bants but driving all the other friends fucking crazy i will probably be this guy absolutely diabolical <laughs> yeah, exactly, Koyla, exactly, Koyla knows, exactly, Koyla, exactly, he knows, he knows. The ukulele guy plus the drunk dude that wants to freestyle is my nightmare, exactly. You know what I'm talking about, that combo. That combo and the other and the other one, the one person that's trying to dance to it, like <laughs> I'm probably the dancer, the one guy that's trying to dance to it, like create a little moment, and everyone else is just like rolling their eyes and wants to fucking you know unalive themselves. <laughs> what's he doing is he doing that for tips if, is he going around with a little tin cup asking for tips and shit is he busking is he like maybe trying to make his money back for what he paid for the ticket or trying to make some extra money to buy drugs or some shit if he's doing that that's way cool if you go to the Gassenbury with the ukulele and you're like, you know what? I've got no money for drugs. I'm just going to play for my drugs. I'm going to play for my drinks. I'm going to play for my dindins. That might be kind of swaggy in a way, right? Just like playing for a fucking bump. <laughs> playing for a pill. Duck, digga, 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 duck, digga, 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 digga. But the funny thing I'm just thinking about the Dua Lipa video, actually. Thinking about the Dua Lipa video. You know what's really funny about the Dua Lipa video? In most of these instances... When somebody does this sort of thing, you kind of expect them to play the song of the person. It's still a bit awkward anyway, but you'd expect that more than him going up to her and getting her to listen to one of his own songs, isn't it? It's so insane. Like, tell me what you think. Like, what? <laughs> it would make more sense if you went up to her and tried to, like, play her an acoustic version of one of her songs. Like, that actually might make some song, some sense, but playing your own like who are you what why <laughs> oh she was so uncomfortable and you know what i love about it too the boyfriend is there the actor dude was there so this guy ambushed her as she was meeting her boyfriend the boyfriend guy that she's dating at the moment he was off camera he was not worried at all he actually was like you deal with that. That's you. He didn't want to get involved. Because when she walks off, you see him at the end. He's actually there. When she when, when, he, when she walks off, you see him there. 
There he is. He was there the whole time. <laughs> he just didn't want to be part of it. And I love him awkwardly asking her for a hug, by the way, at the end. That was very, very, very cringe. I think the hug, asking about my hug was a bit, maybe worse than the wedding of ukulele. Give me a hug. What did he say? say give me a hug. Or where's my hug? What did, what did he say? <laughs> he doesn't even have you know if you play ukulele you have to either sound really good right look at her face oh my god you have to either sound really good playing it or you have to have an amazing voice he doesn't even have a good voice he plays it like shit so it kind of is what it is he basically uses it like a drum it's not even it's, anyway whatever but what does he say to her what words does he say where's my hug what, let's see what he says. I love it, mate. She did. She didn't even let him stop. She didn't even let him finish. I thought she was gonna finish a bar. I love it, mate. It's so good. I love it, mate. <laughs> now I understand. Now I get why. Because sometimes you can take it personally when you're. When you ask somebody, hey, can I come to the afters? Can you ask your friends if I can come to the afters? They're like, nah, they don't know you. And look, you can be like, oh man, I wish I could go. But this is why people are very protective about afters. Because you never know. And afters, you can't take a chance because you're all locked in this house. So you, you know, it's awkward to kick somebody out. So you have, to, you have to know, when you give that person the postcode, you have to be sure that they're an okay hang. That they're not going to be annoying. They're not going to be a cunt. They're not going to be a prick. They're not going to be weird or a creep. You have to be very sure when you send that person a postcode that you know intrinsically this person's okay. Because you never know. If you roll the dice, you might end up with ukulele kid at the door. Yeah, I'm outside. Yeah, it's me. I'm outside. Yuki boy. It's UK boy. I'm outside. Like, you have to be very, very careful. Aye, now she's acting all extra. Can I get a hug? Oh, yuck. Look, she even cringes herself a little bit, but she feels bad for him, so she gives him anyway. Can I get a hug? He has everything rock roll into one, isn't it? He's got that he's got that cringy TikTok haircut. He plays a ukulele, he carries his ukulele around, and he's one of those can I get a hug guys? Where's my hug at? Oh God almighty, man. The trifecta of darkness. I can't believe it, man. Can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? Nice to meet you. Yeah, true. You definitely met her. She definitely doesn't want to meet you ever again. What an absolute psycho of a person, man. Absolute psycho of a person. Legitimate psycho. And I love how there's other accounts of people randomly bumping into him and having the same, same, same experience with him. Absolutely wild. There's actually another video here from 2003 in Park Life. I want the Mula, I want the yellow thing, not the tin tuna. The self checkout, I don't know how to use a computer. Five finger discount, just call me the five finger discount. That's littering. That is littering. Leave no trace. Leave no trace is littering. Oh my god, even more cringe. Even more cringe. Allegedly. He had all these little flyers printed that he sprayed all over the place, probably using one of those like money gun things with his like Instagram handle on it or his socials or something. Maybe a QR code to scan so you can, you know, go to his link tree. Oh, this guy is the worst, bro. This guy is the worst. This guy is the worst. Big up David Guerra. At least he hasn't posted anything with featuring Dua Lipa. You don't talk too soon, my friend. David Guerrero, don't talk too soon. That could be next. That could be next. Don't talk too soon. He might have something out on SoundCloud soon. Remix featuring Dua Lipa. Oh my God, this guy is shameless. <laughs> Look at all the things that he's littering all over the place. Honestly, bro. Honestly. The ego that you'd have to have to ambush friends. It's what it's bad enough when you do this when you're drunk. And I've been guilty of it myself. When you're at a bar somewhere, you're feeling yourself and you start, you know, ambushing groups of people and start to try to be the fucking jester in front of them and stuff. But usually you're trying to do a little bit of humor dumping and running away. It's still annoying, but whatever it may be. But walking up to a group of friends at a festival, because I don't know about you, but usually 
when you go with your friends to a festival, I don't know about you, but usually in most cases, if you're with a big group of friends, usually you don't, you guys don't really hang out together a lot. So that festival is kind of a time for you to kind of bond, to see each other, to hang out. The last thing you want is to have strangers, you know, infiltrate your group. That's why maybe sometimes UK festivals can be a little bit clicky because we all work so hard. We all got so many, we got so busy lives. We don't get to see our friends as often as we want to. So maybe a festival is a great time to see your friend. Oh, hey, I got a chance to hang out with you. We get a chance to socialize and chill, listen to our favorite bands, blah, 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 blah. So the last thing you want is to be ambushed by some stranger. And then this guy pulls up with a guitar, with a ukulele. So it's not like, you know, it's bad enough when it's a, a guy like me at a bar, drunk and happy and trying to make jokes. At least, you know, when I, when I, when I have a couple of dead jokes, I'm going to leave. This guy, you have no idea when he's going to leave. That ukulele is a time sink. And the problem with this ukulele guy is you can have a group of 10 people, but if he gets one or two encouraging faces, like this girl in the orange, looking kind of happy that he's there, this girl kind of smiling, that girl kind of smiling, he'll never leave. That's the issue. You're going to have some agents of chaos in your group who are going to give him some false sense of encouragement He's going to get comfortable and it's going to drive all of you fucking crazy. <laughs> and he will never leave because he thinks he's got an audience. He thinks he's got an audience. Like, oh, yeah, they're really feeling my shit. Can I get a hug? <laughs> Honestly, I want to rip my face off. I want to rip my face off that he said that to Dua Lipa. Can I get a hug, you know? Honestly, have some shame, man. Have some shame. Have some fucking shame. Honestly, he's doing this. He's he's literally he's literally a societal terrorist in some regard. He's a festival terrorist. That's what he is. He's a fucking festival terrorist.